Good morning, folks. We're going to run down yesterday's solar eruption, general space weather, and the usual topics, but then we'll come back and answer some common solar storm questions that keep popping up in these comments. Yesterday, an M-class solar flare destabilized the waning southern sunspot group and allowed it to finally send ejecta in Earth's direction. The observers, NOAA, and NASA all agree on approximate impact time within hours of tomorrow's morning news video, and we all agree geomagnetic storms are likely. At the expected speed and density of impact, we expect up to level 2 or 3 storms. That's the observer's forecast, as officials say level 1 or 2 only. The sunspots retain only the slightest magnetic mixing up north, but it continues to be a shadow of its former self. Solar wind has calmed entirely, so tomorrow's impact will be easily visible in the telemetry. Could there be more coming? Of course it's possible, but the culprit is more likely to be that big filament releasing behind the sunspots, or a coronal hole stream from that dark northern opening which is also expected to impact Earth on January 1st. The gamma ray burst went nuts the last day. Three bursts in less than 30 hours erased two weeks of gamma quiet. Got an article on how we are using slight gravitational anomalies to better map the sea floor. By the way, if mid-ocean ridges are expanding from the cracks, why are the mountain lines perpendicular? Never mind. Folks, as usual, I have to complete the story. Yes, there was record heat for the holiday in the eastern U.S. and in parts of Europe, and yes, that's all you heard on the news. But it was snowing in Mexico, in a big way. And there were record cold marks set across the globe as well. New Mexico actually reported 10-foot snowdrifts in some areas. Let's jump back to the incoming solar storm and pick around the details. The most logical beginner question when you get into this stuff and see an eruption is, do we need to fear? Well, apart from my not thinking death is anything to fear, the answer is no. A hundred times more powerful eruptions have hit us without a single notch to the body count. I'll only say that it may not be true forever. But to understand, let's see what types of news we look for, and it's mostly electrically related. We've seen airlines shut down, transformers explode, grids have to shut down, internet, telecom problems, all kinds of things, including nuclear reactors shutting down. And what normally determines how bad the geomagnetic storm is, and how many of those effects we see, is the size and strength of the eruption, and how big of an impact, and how many impacts take place. That part's important, as NASA is predicting back-to-back -back impacts tomorrow. Two successive CMEs act like a far greater single eruption. So let's begin to analyze if indeed there are multiple CMEs. Looking in 171 angstroms, we'll see the umbral field snap and push outward, releasing material from both ends of the sunspot group's barred spiral shape. But the central field growth is also indicative of a directly outward eruption in their uniformity and symmetry with respect to the group. Cactus has indeed tracked three components to the CME, and honestly, I couldn't tell you if we have any way of knowing how they will line up or combine on their way to Earth. We'll see tomorrow. Another question is, does this count as breaking the Earth-facing quiet? The answer is yes and no. Technically, anything that puts ejecta our way breaks the trend, as the sun has been very quiet towards Earth. But remember, this was only an M1 flare, and we've seen a hundred times more powerful eruptions with absolutely no effects at all sometimes. But before that allows a full and satisfying exhale, we have also seen level 1 storms, including those from relatively puny space weather, produce all of the effects we just mentioned in terms of technology. And right now, we better not see one of those much bigger blasts anytime soon because Earth's vulnerability to the sun is enhanced, and that's probably going to be true for decades. Why? The sun is changing the heliospheric character. The Earth's magnetic protection is weakening and fading away. Website members, if you don't make immediate time to watch at least the first talk posted under Observing the Frontier, I honestly have no idea why you are a site member. This is one half of the most important lesson an observer can ever learn. Just how close we came, and just how close we are to the edge. We've got pressure and radar in our top viewer locations, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.